So consider this problem here. A two by four is used as a sill plate, um, is used as a sill plate. Calculate the maximum change in width and height it might undergo. So think back to the assumptions that we're going to use. The assumptions um, from the Remmel Hart and Fantosi method, again, what we're going to do is assume 6% shrinkage uh, between a moisture content of 30% and a moisture content of 0%. So for the maximum shrinkage, we would be going from a moisture content of 30 to a moisture content of 0. Okay, and if you're not familiar with this program, this program is SMATH. Um, I do have a, a series on this channel uh, looking at how to uh, handle SMATH, some basic instruction in it. Um, and go ahead and take a look at that if you're curious. SMATH is just kind of a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, um, what you see is what you get, uh, hand calculation generator or calculation sheet program. Very similar to um, MathCAD, except it's really nice and that is a freeware program. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and define some variables. So I think first I'll just I'll just call uh, maybe a shrinkage coefficient. And this would be, I'm just going to go ahead and call this arbitrarily S. And I'll let, just call that, uh, label that as 0 0.06 for the 6%. Then maybe I'll calculate the change in, oh, also I need my... Uh, initial and final heights. So let's do an, an uh, end width course. I can manage to spell the word initial properly. Uh, the initial height, and I'm going to call this HI, and that's going to be equal to 1.5 inches. Just the, although usually we label this uh, the one the narrow dimension is the width and the broader one is the height, but that's assuming we're using that as a bending element. But this is a sill plate, so it's going to be uh, laid flat on the ground or actually not on the ground on the foundation. Um, but so that's why I'm using uh, these as the width and the height. And of course the 1.5 and 3.5 come from the fact that this is a two by four. And the initial width, this would be 3.5 inches. Uh, next, let's go ahead and calculate some delta values, some change. And this would simply be the product of the two. So the change, uh, I'm going to call this, since we're doing a change, I'll be fancy and go ahead and put in a delta in there. That's just going to be hi times our coefficient s. And it wants to output in meters, but since we're doing everything in inches, we'll go ahead and output that in inches. So this thing is going to undergo a change in height along this axis here of uh, 0.21 inches. And then I'll copy that and change some labels and variables to get a change in width as well. And I'll go ahead and call that change in delta B instead of delta H and label that BI um, as well. Oops, looks like I need to rename that. Oh, and that's, I was wondering why that value was so high. Sorry, the change in height is going to be 0 0.09 inches. So in other words, it's going to change 0 0.09 uh, inches in this direction and 0 0.21 inches in this direction. And again, this is the maximum amount of shrinkage that might occur. And so I could then say the minimum height, uh, this would be simply the subtraction of the two or the difference of the two. And that would be HI, oops, HI minus delta H. And I'll go ahead and label that in inches. And then the minimum width as well. Oh, I actually should probably just go ahead and give this a label. That would be good as well. So copy this, put this, and give this a label of HF. And define HF as the, just the difference that I just outlined. And that will equal that in meters, but I want to get this in inches. 1.41 inches. And we'll go ahead and calculate that, or change that, uh, copy and paste this and change it into a width. And relabel some values, just put, replacing my B, H's with B's. B 
and B. So um, assuming this undergoes the max amount of shrinkage we're going to assume, um, the minute and assuming the height, the height and width are based on the at the fiber saturation point, which is not an unreasonable assumption, the minimum height that that two by four as oriented this way, or the minimum height of that sill plate might be 1.41 inches and the minimum width might be 3.29 inches. And again, that is assuming the worst case of shrinkage going from all the way from the 30% moisture content to a 0% uh, moisture content. So uh, next, let's look at this problem here. Calculate the shrinkage the same two by four sill plate will undergo from a moisture content of 18% to a moisture content of 10%. And so this is going to be a little bit different and intrinsically a little more difficult, although still not too bad as we'll see. Um, so the difficulty with this is that we're not going to experience the whole 30% uh, shrinkage value, or I should, sorry, the, thir the full 6% uh, shrinkage value going from a moisture content of 30% to a moisture content of 0%. Um, uh, we're only going from 18 to 10. So. What that might mean is, let's say, uh, as you when you install a piece of lumber, maybe it has a moisture content of 18%, and you know that in your area the moisture content of you know interior lumber, properly uh, you know properly uh, shielded lumber, uh, will have uh, maybe a minimum moisture content of 10%. So you're expecting over the seasons maybe it, its moisture content will vary from 18 to 10%, and you want to know the shrinkage about both axes both width and height um, that will occur over that moisture content, just over that moisture content range. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to calculate a uh, shrinkage value. And what I mean by that is basically the uh, percent shrinkage for 1% change in moisture content. And that's going to be relatively straightforward. So again, because the um, because the uh, overall change in in um, shrinkage is, or the overall yeah the overall shrinkage is six percent from um, from thirty uh, to zero, I want to calculate that for just one for just one percent change in moisture content. So that's just going to be equal to um, 6 over 30 um, per 1% change in the moisture content, or more precisely, if I want a coefficient I can use, I should use the same 0.06 uh, that I used above, and I'll have a number that I can just directly multiply, and that's going to be 0 0.002. In other words, um, for every 1% change in moisture content, the um, the dimensions are going to decrease by a factor of 0 0.002. So uh, let's go then go ahead and calculate the um, shrinkage, or in, in other words, the change in height. Uh, the shrinkage or the change in height. And actually, let's go ahead and also calculate, just go ahead and put down a delta MC, a change in moisture content. Or maybe I'll even put in a moisture content initial. We'll get it fancy here and have an initial and a final uh, explicitly labeled. So the moisture content initial would be, um, let's say, MC dot I equals, that would be 18% in this problem. And the moisture content final would be uh, the 10%. Would be 10%. And then we'll go ahead and calculate an overall change in moisture content, which of course, I could just, you know, subtract them in my head. That's obviously 18 minus 10 is 8. But I'm just uh, creating, the, if I'm creating an SMAS sheet, I'll just go ahead and make it more complete for the sake of uh, thoroughness. I should say uh, change in moisture content. And that would be a delta MC. 
and that would be mc initial minus mc final. Actually, no, that would be the other way around. We usually do delta is final minus initial. And so that would be a negative 8. Now, um, we'll probably want to work... The, now, having this as a negative um, is a little bit weird because um, that is going to introduce the issues that we're going to have to put a negative in our actual shrinkage calculation because the shrinkage assumes a positive value for a change in moisture content, but that's fine. That way we can do the nice proper final minus initial for our delta. And all the mathematicians in the audience, well, I probably shouldn't say mathematicians, I should probably say high school mathematics teachers will be very, uh, very pleased with that. Anyway, got that pounded into my head in high school. Anyway, um, so uh, let's calculate the, now I think we can calculate the shrinkage, but let's call this height shrinkage, which is just the change in height. And that would be equal to the uh, height initial, the initial height. We'll actually just call that um, S comma H, the shrinkage in height. And we can call these whatever we want. These variables, of course, are just, these labels, of course, are arbitrary. The shrinkage in height, uh, that's going to be equal to the initial height times our shrinkage value times our change in moisture content, our delta mc and oh actually we do need that negative well actually i suppose we could leave it as neg a, a, a negative value but i guess to be consistent with what we have above i will go ahead and just put a negative in there and then that produces something it wants to output in meters but i'm gonna i'm gonna tell it to output in inches so it's going to have a change in height of 0.024 inches which we notice is substantially less than what we had before, which was sort of the maximum case. We're only undergoing a portion of that um, change in moisture content, so then we're only going to have a portion of that change in dimension, or a portion of that resulting shrinkage. So then the uh, width shrinkage, again, the change in width. And I'll go ahead and, and just go, uh, go ahead and change my variables here. And things will go relatively uh, quickly. And that's going to be 0 0.056 inches. And so uh, then I could say my, um, I could go and calculate my final initial height, but actually, yeah, go, let's go ahead and assume the initial height was the same 1.5. Let's say, uh, actually, the nice thing about this, I can probably just go ahead and copy these and change them to a, uh, just modify the variables and call these final height and final width. And that would be, all, all I need to do is change this to be, co to be uh, uh, compatible with my earlier, uh, my previous calculation and S comma B. And there we have it. The final height would be 1.476 or 1.48 inches, and the final width would be 3.44 inches. And that's how you handle, um, that's how you apply this uh, Rommel Hart and Fantosi method for a portion of the shrinkage range rather than the entire thing, than, rather than the entire uh, shrinkage range from a moisture content of 30% to a moisture content of 0%. Finally, let's consider this example here. A wall is constructed with a 2x4 uh, double top plate, a 2x4 sill plate, and an 8 foot long and, or, and 8 foot long 2x4 studs. Uh, calculate the change uh, of the overall change of height in the wall going from a moisture content of 8% to a moisture content of 12%. In other words, uh, we want to know the overall, the entire change of height uh, from all of this lumber going from, from the entire wall, all the lumber in it going from a moisture content of 8% to 12%. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy a few things over here. That will be the same. Let's see, this S value, again, we're just using the Rommel Hart and Fantosi method and assuming the same 6% from zero to 30. 
Now our initial moisture content here is going to be, uh, let's say this is going to be 12%, or sorry, 8%, and this is going to be uh, 12%. And then our change in moisture content is going to be that. And then the height shrinkage, well, we got to be very careful. This is going to be the uh, height shrinkage of just one two by four, um, like from here to here, basically. So this is going to be, oh, and we also need an initial height, but thankfully that's going to be exactly the same because we're still using two by fours. Initial height, so that's going to be the same, 1.5 inches. Okay, so um, since we now have a different change in moisture content, we're going to experience a negative height shrinkage. Oh, that's interesting. And that's because, again, this is actually, because it's going from a lower moisture content to higher moisture content, it's actually going to expand, or in other words, a negative shrinkage. And so the height shrinkage is going to be negative 0.012 inches, or in other words, I could say, I, I, should, I should probably, I should, or, I should probably label this height shrinkage of one, uh, height shrinkage of one sill plate slash top plate. Um, then what I next need to wonder, worry about is what about the shrinkage of the studs? So uh, this is obviously not to scale because this is going to be just 1.5 inches from here to here, three inches from here to here. So obviously that's not to scale. Um, and this entire thing here is, is much larger at eight feet. So um, do we need to worry about how do we handle that shrinkage? Well, um, remember, uh, we've as we previously discussed, we don't need to consider shrinkage uh, in the longitudinal direction. The grain in these studs is going to be going up and down here while uh, in the uh, sill and top plates, they're going into the page. So while these things may expand, while this uh, uh, wall stud or these wall studs will expand left and right and into and out of the page, they will not expand vertically and thus contribute to the overall change in height. So this is actually just going to be zero. I'm not even going to include it in my calculation. So the overall change in height Um, is going to just be, and since this is, a, I'll go ahead and put a negative shrinkage value on this. Uh, let's say delta H, and since we have three of these elements, one, two, three, it's going to be, oh, I'll put a negative on here, negative three times our uh, shrinkage value, and so that's just going to be 0 0.036 inches. And so the final wall height, oh, actually I should probably go calculate the overall initial wall height. And that would be, I'm going to use a capital H for this to, to signify that I'm talking about the overall height, not just the height of the sill and top plate. And that would be eight feet plus three times our HI value. And that would be, that would come to 100.5 inches. And then the overall final wall height would just be, uh, let's see, that's going to be, the final height is going to be equal to the initial wall height, the initial overall height, plus our delta H. And actually, I should probably call that delta capital H to be consistent in my labels. But uh, maybe a pedant maybe I'm being a bit pedantic with that. Delta H, delta H, and that is 100.536 inches. 
So we're looking at, you know, well less than a tenth of an inch of shrinkage. Um, let's, um, so yeah, let's, you know, 1 over 16th by comparison is 0. 0.0625. So we're looking, and 1 over 32nd is 0. 0.03125. So we're looking over this entire wall, we're looking at about 1 32nd of an inch of shrinkage, and that may or may not be important. Typically that's not important. Again, in most cases, we don't need to consider shrinkage, but especially if you have large changes in moisture content, or if you have very tall multi-story buildings, imagine if you had a 10-story wooden building and you had many, many double, you know, sill plates and top plates and things like that. Um, in that case, in, in those cases, if you get, you start adding more and more and more of these uh, horizontal elements, in some cases, you know, if, you're, if you have a dozen of them and you're multiplying by a dozen instead of three, um, you might start getting substantial shrinkage, especially if you also have large changes in moisture content. But anyway, again, in most cases, we don't need to consider it as design engineers, but there may be some cases where it is important.